Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to lecture number five of the course on statistics and probability. You will recall that in the last lecture, I discussed with you the construction of the frequency distribution of a continuous variable. Also, we did the relative frequency distribution and the percentage frequency distribution. We learned how to draw the histogram, the frequency polygon, and the frequency curve. Aaj, main aapke saath mukhtalif jo frequency curves hume real life mein encounter karni hoti hain, wo discuss karungi. And then we will go on to the cumulative frequency distribution and the cumulative frequency polygon. Sabse pehle, let us revise a little bit of what we did last time. You will recall that in the last lecture, I conveyed to you that the frequency polygon is that diagram that we obtain by plotting the class frequencies against the midpoints of the classes and by connecting the points so obtained by straight line segments. In the EPA mileage rating example, our frequencies were 2, 4, 14, 8, and 2 against the various classes that we had formed. And our frequency polygon came out to be as you now see on the screen. Also, you will recall that I communicated to you that the frequency curve is obtained by smoothing the frequency polygon that we have drawn. In the example of the EPA mileage ratings, the frequency curve came out to be, as you now see on the screen. Ye jo dotted line aap dekh rahe hain, uh, this of course is the frequency curve or jo straight line segments wala khaka hai, that is the frequency polygon. Ye jo frequency curve hai, iska purpose us distribution ke overall pattern ko display karna hota hai. Isme ye zaruri nahi hai ke aap ki jo curve hai, wo un sub points ke darmiyan mein se guzre. Shayad aap ko yaad ho ke maine last time bhi is baat pe stress kiya tha. It should be noted that the frequency curve is actually a theoretical concept. Ye jo aapne histogram banaya tha, agar aap iski jo classes hain, aapki jo frequency distribution hai, agar uski jo classes hain, unki tadaat ko bhoat badha dein, aur unka jo class interval hai, usko narrow kar dein, to aapki jo distribution banegi, uski shakal kuch is qasam ki hogi. The smaller the class interval and the larger the number of classes, the narrower the rectangles become as you are seeing now on the screen. Ab isi concept ko aap, yani aur aage le jayein, aap unko narrow se narrow se narrow karte jayein, to ultimately you arrive at what we call the frequency curve. In spite of the fact that the frequency curve is actually a theoretical concept, it is very useful in analyzing real world situations. The reason is that often very close approximations to these theoretical curves are generated in real life. Yani ye theoretical curves jo hain, ye un real life phenomena ko itni closely approximate karti hai ke it is valid to utilize the mathematical properties of these curves to analyze those real world situations. Students, I will now discuss with you the various types of frequency curves that we do encounter in practice. We have the symmetrical frequency curve, the moderate, moderately skewed frequency distribution, the extremely skewed frequency distribution, the U-shaped frequency curve, and 
also the uniform distribution. Let us discuss these one by one. First of all, the symmetric frequency distribution is of the shape that you now see on the screen. This distribution ka khasa ye hai ke agar aap ek vertical line place kare in the center of the distribution, then the left hand side will be the mirror image of the right hand side. Yani dono sides bilkul ek jesi malum hongi, ek dusre ki reflection, and this is what is known as the symmetric frequency curve. Next, the moderately skewed frequency curve. Students, is ke andar we have two categories, the positively skewed and the negatively skewed. Positively skewed wo hai jis mein the right tail is longer than the left tail, jabke negatively skewed usko kehte hai jis mein the left tail is longer than the right tail. Jaisa ke aap note kar rahe hai, agar iske darmyan aap ek aina khada kare, to the left hand side is not the mirror image of the right hand side. Aur ye jo lack of symmetry hai, isi ko skewness kehte hai. Both of them that we have just considered are the moderately skewed distributions. But then we also have the extremely skewed frequency distribution. As you now see on the screen, an extremely skewed distribution is the one in which the maximum frequency occurs at the end of the frequency distribution. As you can see, this, um, this curve looks like a J and therefore it is also called a J-shaped distribution. Iska example, agar aap death rate ki baat kare of the adult population of any country, to aap uh, realize karenge ke us distribution ki jo shape hogi, it will be like a J-shaped distribution. Why? Because the, for lower adult age, the death rate will be lower, but for the advanced age, the death rate is higher. And so the shape is like that of a J. Ye to thi extremely negatively skewed distribution, this ko aap J shape bhi keh sakte hai. But then also, of course, you can have the extremely positively skewed distribution, which looks like a reverse J, as you can now see on the screen. Let me illustrate this type of a distribution with the help of the following example. The following are the numbers of sixes obtained in 50 rolls of four dice. 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 2 and so on. Construct a frequency distribution and a line chart and discuss the overall shape of the data. Students, is me aap sabse pehle ye note ki jay ke char dice ko aap roll kar rahe and you are interested in determining how many of the dice show a 6. To pehla jo figure 0 hai, uska matlab ye hai ke aap ne wo char dice roll kiye aur kisi pe bhi 6 occur nahi hua. Similarly, second 0 also means the same thing. But after that, we have the number 1. Iska matlab ye hai ke char dice jo roll kiye gaye unme se ek ke upar 6 nazar aare. Similarly, you can interpret all the values. Now, we would like to convert this raw data into a frequency distribution and all we have to do is to construct a column of x where x represents the number of sixes that we obtain by rolling four dice. As you can see on the screen, x values are 0, 1, 2 
and 3. Now, in order to tally the raw data into our frequency distribution, we will construct the column of tally marks and the column of frequencies. As you can see, the number 0 is the most frequent value and f is equal to 28 corresponding to x is equal to 0. Similarly, f is equal to 17 corresponding to x equal to 1 and f is equal to 4 against x equal to 2 and f is equal to 1 only against x is equal to 3. Agar aap raw data par dobara nazar dali, to aap dek sakte hain ke 3 jo hai that occurred only once. The line chart of this distribution is obtained by taking x along the x-axis and f along the y-axis and as you can see on the slide students the first line is the tallest obviously the first frequency is the greatest and therefore the first line has to be the tallest one the second one is shorter than the first the third still shorter and the last line is the shortest if we draw a freehand curve on top of this line chart we obtain the shape that you now see and I'm sure that you will agree with me that this can be regarded as a reverse J-shaped distribution. Please keep in mind that we must not be drawing a freehand curve in the case of a discrete variable the way we have in this particular example but I have done this here only to illustrate to you the shape of this particular distribution. Students, I would like to convey to you a very interesting point here. Aapne dekha ke ye jo distribution hai, this is extremely positively skewed. The question is, does this data set indicate that the dice that were rolled were unfair? Ye is liye ke hum samaj sakte hai na ke agar hum absolutely fair dice istamal kar rahe hote, to hum ye expect karte ke koi symmetric si distribution hum hasil karte. Shayad hume intuitively kuch is khusam ki feeling ho. But you will be interested to know that if these dice were absolutely fair, we could have expected to obtain frequencies very close to what we have obtained. You will be studying this point in detail when I will be discussing with you the binomial distribution. But at the moment, I would like you to concentrate on this very interesting fact that four tosses of a fair die yield such a sharply skewed distribution. A relatively less encountered distribution is the U-shaped distribution. If you consider the example of the death rate of not just the adult population but the entire population of a country, you will agree that you will get something like the U-shaped distribution. Iski wajah ye hai ke, as you all know, infant mortality rate is higher than the death rate at, at ages 20 to 50. And then the, for the advanced age, again the death rate is higher. Yani, shuru mein wo high hoga, end mein wo high hoga, aur darmyan ki jo age group hai, us mein wo fall karta hai. Isliye, your distribution is like a U-shaped distribution. Another rather less frequently encountered distribution is the uniform distribution. Let me illustrate this distribution with the help of a very simple example. 
Suppose that a fair die is rolled 120 times and the following frequency distribution is obtained. X represents the number of dots on the uppermost face. Obviously, X takes the values 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 and the frequencies are 19, 22, 20, 21, 19 and 19. The line chart of this distribution is, as you see on the screen, a set of vertical lines which are almost equally tall. If we draw a freehand curve along the top points of these vertical lines, students, we obtain a horizontal line. In other words, our freehand curve is not a curve but a line and because of the fact that it is horizontal, we can say that we are dealing with a uniform distribution. The point to be noted is that since the die was absolutely fair, therefore every side of the die had equal chance of coming on the top. As such, out of 120 tosses, we could have expected to obtain x equal to 1 20 times, x equal to 2 20 times, 3 20 times and so on. And we note that the frequencies that we have actually obtained are very close to the expected values 20, 20, 20 and so on. After all, Jo Hamne observed kiya hai 19, 22, 20, 21, and so on. You will uh, agree that these values are very close to what we could have expected theoretically. So, the gist of the whole discussion is that whenever we are dealing with an equally likely situation, of the type described in this example, we are dealing with the uniform distribution. Students, out of all these curves that I have discussed with you, the most commonly encountered one is the moderately skewed distribution. Hazar ha phenomena aise hain, jisme aapko frequency distribution ki ye shakal milti hai. Aap uh, kisi school mein chale jaiye. Just uh, go and start measuring the children in that school. Measure their heights, their weights, their shoulder lengths, their blood pressures, their body temperatures and what have you. And you collect that data and you make your frequency distribution and you draw the histogram. And you will find that it is like a moderately skewed distribution. Abhi tak humne jitni bhi frequency curves discuss ki hain, of course all of them pertain to the continuous variable. But obviously a similar situation will hold for the discrete frequency distribution. And as you can now see on the screen, in case of a discrete variable also, you will either have a symmetric distribution or a positively skewed or a negatively skewed one. Ye to humne jo frequency distribution ki mukhtlif shaklein possible hoti hain, usko discuss kiya. Let us now go to the cumulative frequency distribution concept, which I have already done with you when I discussed the discrete frequency distribution. You will recall that in lecture number three, when we were dealing with the discrete frequency distribution, I conveyed to you ke agar aap un frequencies ko add karna shuru kar dein, yani first frequency as it is, 
and then that plus the next one gives you the second cumulative frequency and so on. So, usko cumulative frequency distribution kehte hain. Aye, ab isi concept ko continuous frequency distribution ke upar apply karte hain. Aur usi example se kar lete hain jo hum shuru se karte chale aa rahe hain. That of the EPA mileage ratings. So, as you can uh, recall and see on the screen, the frequencies of the distribution that we had for that example were 2, 4, 14, 8 and 2. And if we add these the way we did in lecture number 3, we obtain the cumulative frequency column as 2, 6, 20, 28, and 30. Aapko yaad hoga ke jab hum discrete frequency distribution ki cumulation jab hum ne ki, to uski interpretation is tara se thi ke kisi bhi x value ke against jo cumulative frequency likhi hai, that tells you how many observations in that distribution are equal to that x value or smaller than that x value. Isi tara abhi jo example hum consider kar rahe hain, is mein bhi cumulative frequencies ka concept kuch taqreeban isi qisam ka hai. Lekin is mein jo important baat hai, woh yeh hai, ke hum yeh samaj paayen ke jo bhi cumulative frequency hum consider kar rahe hain, it gives us the total number of observations starting from the lower class boundary of the first class up to the upper class boundary of that particular class that we are considering. For example, if we consider the cumulative frequency of the third class in this example of the EPA mileage ratings, it is 20. And what does it mean? It means that the mileage of 20 cars lies somewhere between 29.95 and 38.95. Similarly, the mileage of 28 cars lies anywhere between 29.95 and 41.95. Kehne ka maqsad ye hai ki jis class ke against aap wo frequency, cumulative frequency pad rahe hai, us ki upper boundary se piche ko aap jaiye up to the lower boundary of the first class. This type of accumulative frequency distribution is called the less than type of accumulative frequency distribution. Why is that? Because any cumulative frequency tells you ke how many observations are less than the upper boundary of that particular class. For example, in our same example of the EPA mileage ratings, 20 cars have mileage less than 38.95. Ya yun kehye ke 20 cars have mileage 38.95 or less. Aye ab iska, iska diagrammatic version dekhte hain. The graph that is called the cumulative frequency polygon. Iske liye students you will be taking the upper class boundaries along the x-axis and the cumulative frequencies along the y-axis, as you can now see on the screen. The cumulative frequencies are plotted on the graph paper against these upper class boundaries and the points so obtained are joined by means of straight line segments. In the example of the EPA mileage ratings, our cumulative frequency polygon comes out the way you now see on the screen. This graph is also called the OGIV, O-G-I-V-E. Isko western countries mein to OGIV pronounce karte hain, lekin hamare haan OGIV mustamil hai. This is the graph of the cumulative frequency distribution. Aapne note kiya hoga ke is graph ki jo left hand side hai, that is touching the x-axis. This is achieved by adding a class to the frequency table on the top. 
as you can now see on the screen agar aap apni classes mein ek class ka izafa kar le in the beginning so that you have a class from 26.95 to 29.95 obviously the frequency of that class is going to be zero because actually none of the cars was falling in that category kyunki uski frequency zero hai isliye obviously uski cumulative frequency bhi zero hogi aur jab aap usko plot karenge to naturally because of the value zero your first point will touch the x axis now if you want your frequency your cumulative frequency polygon to be close from the right hand side also this is achieved by dropping a perpendicular from the last point down to the x axis as you can now see on the screen actually this step is not very important from the statistical point of view lekin agar aap us purani baat pe jaye ke polygon to many sided closed figure ko kehte hain to phir is baat ko agar hum pura karna chahe to then we can do that as i have just explained let us consolidate all these ideas with the help of the example of the ages of managers of child care centers that we discussed in the last lecture as you will recall the statement of the example was the following table contains the ages of 50 managers of child care centers in five cities of a developed country the ages were 42 26 32 and so on we converted this data into a frequency distribution in the last lecture and today we are interested in constructing the cumulative frequency distribution the students will recall that the frequency distribution that we obtained last time was 20 to 29 30 to 39 40 to 49 and so on as the age groups and the frequencies were 6 18 11 11 3 and 1 now in order to construct the cumulative frequency distribution the first thing that we remind ourselves of is that the cumulative frequency is a running total of the frequencies through the classes the cumulative frequency for each class interval is the frequency for that particular class interval added to the preceding cumulative total adopting this process in this particular example we note that the frequency of the first class is 6 and hence the cumulative frequency of the first class will also be 6 the cumulative frequency of the second class interval will be obtained by adding the frequency of the second class 18 to the cumulative frequency of the preceding class that is 6 and hence the cumulative frequency of the second class is 24 proceeding in this manner we obtain all the cumulative frequencies and we note that the cumulative frequency of the last class is 50 which is exactly equal to the sum of the frequencies hence our column of cumulative frequencies reads 6 24 35 46 49 49 and 50 now the important question is how do we interpret this column of cumulative frequencies well it is quite simple similar to what we did in the last example students in this example 
we note that 24 of the 50 managers are 39 years of age or less. Or ye many kistra se interpret kia? Well, if you look at the upper limit of the class, which has the cumulative frequency 24 students, you see that the upper limit is equal to 39. Or iska yehi matlab hai na, ke 24 managers aise hai. Jin ki umar 39 years ya usse kam hai. Agar aap frequency ke column ko dekhe, to 18 managers aap dekh rahe hai ke 30 to 39 age group mein hai. Or 6 managers 20 to 29 ke age group mein hai. To zahir hai ke agar aap 6 or 18 ko add kare, to 24 jo number hai, that corresponds to the age group. 20 to 39. Dusre lafzo me, 24 managers are such who are 39 years or less age wise, and this is exactly what I said earlier. Similarly, we can interpret all the other cumulative frequencies. For example, 46 of the 50 managers, that is 92% of the managers are 59 years of age or less, that is less than 60 years old, and so on and so forth. Next, let us consider the graphic representation of the cumulative frequency distribution. Students proceeding exactly the same way as we did in the previous example, we obtain the cumulative frequency polygon that you now see on the screen. The upper boundaries along the x-axis and the cumulative frequencies along the y-axis with one class added in the beginning with zero cumulative frequency yields this attractive cumulative frequency polygon. Students, let me now share with you some real life applications of the concept of cumulative frequency. It is used in many real life situations, including sales cumulated over a fiscal year, sports scores during a contest, in other words, the cumulated points, years of service, points earned in a course, and costs of doing business over a period of time. Aap note ki jiye ke in tamam examples mein cumulation ka concept shamil hai aur hum dekhte hain ke joon joon us particular phenomenon ke hawale se Hum aage badhte hain, tuu tuu hum cumulate karte chale jate hain apne variable ki values ko. For example, going back to the first one that you have on the screen, sales cumulated over a fiscal year. Yani, ek saal ke doran, joo joo sales hoti chali jayengi, aap apne record mein, Unko add karte chale jayenge, cumulate karte chale jayenge. To is taras ke concepts hai, jo is particular technical concept ke saath relate karte hai. Students, aaj mene aapke saath ek bohat important, bohat basic, lekin bohat important concept discuss kiya hai. And that is the concept of the frequency distribution of a continuous variable and its um, frequency curve and its cumulative frequency polygon. Let us now consolidate all this that we have done by considering another example. The example that you are now seeing on the screen pertains to a sample of 40 pizza products produced by various companies or is me this variable me hum interested hai that is the 
कॉस्ट ऑफ अ स्लाइस ऑफ पिज्जा इन अमेरिकन डॉलर्स आप यकीनन मेरे साथ एग्री करेंगे कि ये तो एक बहुत ही मज़ेदार किस्म की एग्जाम्पल है क्योंकि पिज्जों की इतनी ज़्यादा किस्में देख कर यकीन आपके मुँह में भी पानी भर आया होगा लेकिन बहरहाल खाने पीने की बात तो हम बाद में करेंगे लेट इस फर्स्ट कंसिडर द कंस्ट्रक्शन ऑफ अ फ्रीकुनसी डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन फॉर दिस पर्टिकुलर डेटा सेट द फर्स्ट थिंग टू नोट इज दैट द एग्जाम्पल दैट वी डिड बिफोर दैट ऑफ द ई पी ए माइलेज रेटिंग्स उसमें हमारा सारा जो डेटा था दैट वॉज करेक्ट टू वन डेसमल प्लेस ये जो एग्जाम्पल है जैसा कि आपने देखा इसमें तमाम तर वैल्यूज दे आर करेक्ट टू टू डेसमल प्लेस अब इससे कोई फ़र्क तो नहीं पड़ता एज फार एज आवर स्टेप्स आर कंसर्न वी विल प्रोसीड इन एग्जैक्टली द सेम मैनर एज वी डिड इन द लास्ट एग्जाम्पल इफ यू गो बैक टू द डेटा सेट यू फाइंड दैट द स्मॉलेस्ट वैल्यू इन द डेटा सेट इज ज़ीरो पॉइंट फाइव टू एंड द लार्जेस्ट वैल्यू इज़ वन पॉइंट नाइन ज़ीरो सब्ट्रैक्टिंग एक्स नाट फ्राम एक्स एम द रेंज कम्स आउट टू बी वन पॉइंट थ्री एट आपको याद होगा कि इससे अगला स्टेप ये होता है कि हम डिसाइड करें कि हाउ मैनी क्लासेज डू वी वॉन्ट टू हैव और मैंने आपको बताया था कि इसके लिए कोई बहुत ही ज़्यादा रिजिड हार्ड एंड फास्ट रूल नहीं है लेट एस सपोज दैट वी डिसाइड दैट वी वुड लाइक टू हैव एट क्लासेज इन दैट केस एज यू विल रिकॉल द नेक्स्ट स्टेप इज टू डिवाइड द रेंज बाय द नंबर ऑफ क्लासेज सो दैट यू ऑप्टेन एन अप्रॉक्सीमेट वैल्यू ऑफ योर क्लास इंटरवल सो एज यू कैन सी ऑन द स्लाइड इन दिस पर्टिकुलर एग्जाम्पल डिवाइडिंग द रेंज बाय द नंबर ऑफ क्लासेज विच इज एट वी ऑप्टेन ज़ीरो पॉइंट वन सेवन टू फाइव बट अफकोर्स वी वुड लाइक टू राउंड इट टू अ मोर कन्वीनियंट नंबर एंड हैंस वी से दैट आवर क्लास इंटरवल इज इक्वल टू ज़ीरो पॉइंट टू ज़ीरो नाउ व द नेक्स्ट स्टेप एज यू विल रिमेंबर इज टू डिसाइड द लोअर लिमिट ऑफ द फर्स्ट क्लास इस डेटा में चूँकि हमारा सबसे छोटी वैल्यू ज़ीरो पॉइंट फाइव टू है you know we can we have various options but if i take 0.51 as the lower limit of the first class that will make it quite convenient for me because as you now see on the screen if i do that i get class limits as 0.51 to 0.70 0.71 to 0.90 and so on वंस अगेन आपको मैं याद दिलाऊं कि आपको शायद ऐसा लगे कि दैट द क्लास इंटरवल इज़ नो लॉन्गर पॉइंट टू ज़ीरो बट यही चीज़ है अहम कि आप नोट करें कि ऑल दो इट अपीयर्स टू बी ज़ीरो पॉइंट वन नाइन एक्चुअली इट इज़ ज़ीरो पॉइंट टू ज़ीरो इसमें जो बात देखने की है वो ये है कि जब कभी भी आप क्लास लिमिट्स फॉर्म कर रहे हैं इस तरीके से दैट यू आर मेंटेनिंग अ गैप बिटवीन द अपर लिमिट ऑफ अ क्लास एंड द लोअर लिमिट ऑफ द नेक्स्ट क्लास देन यू शुड नॉट सब्ट्रैक्ट द लोअर लिमिट ऑफ एनी क्लास फ्रॉम इट्स अपर लिमिट इन ऑर्डर टू फाइंड द क्लास इंटरवल वॉट यू शुड डू इज टू सब्ट्रैक्ट द लोअर लिमिट ऑफ एनी क्लास फ्राम द लोअर लिमिट ऑफ द नेक्स्ट क्लास and you will find that you have exactly the class interval that you want as you now see on the screen in this particular example if you subtract the lower limit of the first class from the lower limit of the second you do obtain 0.71 minus 0.51 which is exactly 0.20 the class interval that you wanted similarly you can also subtract the low upper limit of a class from the upper limit of the next class and in this example 0.90 minus 0.70 also gives you exactly 0.20 
the class interval that you wanted. The next concept is that of the class boundaries. Or yaha pe aapko thoda sa aur zyada careful hona padega. Isliye ke ab is data set mein hamari class limits jo hain wohi do decimal tak hain. Isliye class boundaries jo hain they will have to be up to three decimal places. You see, this is the golden rule. Ke jo aap pehle limits form kare, unke number of decimal points exactly utne hi ho, jitne aapke data ke hain. Aur baad mein, jab aap class boundaries form karenge, to jis procedure se hum form karte hain, automatically one decimal place is increased and there is no problem of tallying the data when the tallying uh, process starts. Is liye ke data to bar hal do decimal ka hai aur teen decimal wali to humare data set mein koi value hi nahi hai. Is liye hume is kusam ka koi problem nahi aega ke ab wo jo upper boundary bhi wo hi hai kisi class ki aur ugly class ki lower boundary bhi wo hi hai to meri value kidar fall karegi that doesn't arise. So, as you now see on the screen, in this particular example, the upper limit of the first class is 0 0.70 and the lower limit of the second is 0 0.71. And when you add the two and divide by two, your upper boundary of the first class as well as the lower boundary of the second class comes out to be 0 0.705. But since there is no value in my data set equal to 0 0.705, there is no problem regarding the tallying of the data in this frequency distribution. Of course, the next step is to actually tally the entire data in your frequency distribution. Students, I will be very happy if you would take this up as an exercise and tally all the data of this example in your frequency distribution and then go on to draw the histogram, the frequency polygon and the frequency curve of this data set. Iske baad aap us frequency curve ko judge kijiye. Is it positively skewed, negatively skewed or any other shape? And also you should try to interpret the shape that you are getting. Also, if you do the accumulation of the frequencies, then you will get an idea of the uh, number of uh, pizza products which have the cost up to a certain value, as I explained with reference to the last example. Many of you said that the most frequently encountered frequency curve is the moderately skewed one moderately positively skewed or moderately negatively skewed. This example ke data par to maine work nahi kiya hai. But I do have a hunch ke jab aap iski frequency curve banayenge, so that will also be something of that, of the shape, the moderately skewed shape. Iski wajah kya hai? Why is it that uh, a lot of time our shape, our curve shape is like this? Ke ऐसी एक शेप के जिसको हम हंप शेप भी कह सकते हैं और जो आम तौर पे एब्सोल्युटली सिमेट्रिक तो नहीं होती but it is approximately symmetric slightly positively skewed or slightly negatively skewed इसकी वजह क्या है uh, आइए उस एग्जांपल पे दोबारा चलते हैं जो मैंने आपसे कहा कि आप किसी भी स्कूल में चले जाइए and you just start measuring those children their heights, their weights, their body temperatures, their blood pressures, and so on and so forth. In sare phenomena me se ek ko le lije. Let's talk about the weight of the children of one particular class. Kisi ek class me, they will be more or less of the same age. So age ke hisab se hum keh sakte hain ke it's like a constant, a constant value. So, now this particular age group, which is the same as the same as the same as the 
जो मेजॉरिटी ऑफ द स्टूडेंट्स हैं उनका वज़न एवरेज जो वज़न हो सकता है उस एज में उसी के लगभग होगा ज़्यादातर बच्चे आपको उसी वज़न के मिलेंगे और बहुत कम बच्चे आपको ऐसे मिलेंगे जिनको आप अंडरवेट कहें और इसी तरह कम बच्चे आपको ऐसे मिलेंगे जो जिनको आप ओवरवेट कहेंगे ये जो बात मैं आपसे कर रही हूँ यही अप्लाई होती है बेशुमार फिनमिना के ऊपर कि मजॉरिटी जो है वो उस चीज़ की दरमियानी रेंज में हो अकर कर रही होती है और उसकी लोअर एक्सट्रीम या उसकी अपर एक्सट्रीम उन एक्सट्रीम्स पे कम वैल्यूज़ लाए कर रही होती हैं हाइट की बात कीजिए मोस्ट ऑफ द पीपल इन पाकिस्तान एडल्ट मेल्स मे बी लाइक फाइव फीट टेन इंचज फाइव फीट एट इंचज फाइव फीट एलेवन इंचज और नाइन और सेवन बहुत कम लोग आपको सिक्स फीट से ज़्यादा और और ज़्यादा इसी तरह कम लोग आपको फाइव फीट फोर इंचज या थ्री इंचज पे मिलते हैं एग्जैक्टली exactly यही वजह है वाई यू ऑबटेन अ हम शेप्ड फ्रीक्वेंसी डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन फ्रीक्वेंसी नंबर ऑफ ऑब्जर्वेशन राइज कर जाती है इन द मिडल ऑफ द डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन वह जहाँ पे एवरेज वैल्यू लाई करती है उसके आस पास और फ्रीक्वेंसी डिक्लाइन कर जाती है एट द एक्सट्रीम्स of the distribution and the most fascinating thing students is that this excess and this defect occurs in a more or less balanced manner allah taala ne ye kainat adl husn aur tawazun pe qaim ki hai aur hum hairan aur fascinate ho jate hain कि जब हम देखते हैं कि रियल लाइफ फिनमिना जब आप उसकी डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन कंस्ट्रक्ट करते हैं आपको वो जो एक्सेस और डिफेक्ट है फ्रॉम द एवरेज वैल्यू वो एक बैलेंस्ड मैनर में मिलता है एंड यू गेट समथिंग अप्रॉक्सीमेटली लाइक अ सिमेट्रिक डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन मार्क्स की बात करें when you are uh, st- you know you're enrolled in a college and you you are you have so many students in this college and we take this exam and we have this set of marks you know iska agar aap histogram banaye to iski bhi aapko shakal takriban isi tarah se milegi ke majority of the students jahan pe frequency rise karegi unke marks um, 50% 55% 60% ke lagbhag honge depending depending on the um, caliber of the students और बहुत ज़्यादा नंबरों वाले स्टूडेंट्स कम होंगे बहुत कम नंबरों वाले स्टूडेंट्स भी रेलेटिवली कम होंगे एंड जनरली यू वुड गेट समथिंग लाइक दी सिमेट्रिक डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ कोर्स हमें इसके काउंटर एग्जांपल्स पे भी गौर करना चाहिए देर आर सिचुएशंस व्हेन वी विल नॉट बी गेटिंग समथिंग विच इज़ अप्रॉक्सीमेटली सीमेट्रिक इसी मार्क्स के एग्जाम्पल पर आप रहें और ये सोचें कि ये पर्टिकुलर एग्ज़ाम जिसकी मैं अब बात कर रही हूँ किसी ऐसे प्रोफेसर ने लिया जिन्हें बहुत ही ज़्यादा बहुत ही ज़्यादा मुश्किल एग्ज़ाम लेने का शौक़ है और बहुत ही टफ एग्ज़ाम हो गया अब आप अग्री करेंगे कि इसमें तो बहुत ज़्यादा स्टूडेंट्स के नंबर बहुत काफ़ी कम होंगे और जो फ्रीकुनसी है ना जो बल्क ऑफ द फ्रीकुनसी है that will shift towards the lower marks yani maybe 20% 25% 15% itne numbers wale marks wale students ki tadad shayad bahut zyada ho jaye so the frequency rises not in the middle part where it is like 50 marks or 55 marks but it shifts towards the left side and it rises against the value 20 marks इस केस में आपकी जो डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन है दैट विल बिकम पॉजिटिवली स्क्यूड यू सी इट राइज इन द बिगिनिंग एंड देन इट ड्रॉप्स एंड गोज टुवर्ड्स 
the other end. Or ab iske bilkul opposite situation ko le lije. Think of a test which is very, very easy. Bhoti asan test te diya professor ne. Ab to iske pehle se bilkul opposite situation ho gai. There are so many students now, bhoti other students who are getting 85, 90 and something like that. So in this case, your distribution becomes negatively skewed. You start from a low uh, frequency and as you go and proceed towards the number 85 or 90, your frequency rises. So the rise is not in the middle of the scale of the marks, but it is towards the right side and your distribution is negatively skewed. This brings us to the end of today's lecture. Students, in the last lecture and in today's lecture, you have dealt with a very important concept and that is the frequency distribution of a continuous variable. I have discussed with you the relative frequency distribution and the percentage frequency distribution. Also, we learned how to draw the histogram, the frequency polygon, and the frequency curve. In addition, we did, did the cumulative frequency distribution and the cumulative frequency polygon also known as the OGIV. In the next lecture, I will discuss with you some very interesting diagrams such as the stem and leaf plot and the dot plot. Also, I will begin with you the concept of central tendency of a data set. In the meantime, I would like to encourage you to practice all these concepts that you've done until now and also to, uh, to attempt the assignment that you will find on the website. Best of luck and Allah Hafiz.